GeoMod is a land change model that simulates the spatial allocation of the gain or the loss of exactly one category over time. Thus, GeoMod requires as inputs the beginning and ending times and the quantity of the changing category at the ending time. GeoMod is capable of considering various options for the spatial allocation of change. This video describes the options. This is part two of the GeoMod videos. See the link for part one of the GeoMod videos. The options concern stratification, neighborhood search mode, and various driver weights. Our example uses data from the 26 towns of the Plum Islands Ecosystems site in northeastern Massachusetts, where we simulate the transition from the non-developed land to developed land from 2006 to 2011. In the Simulation Specifications tab, we have the option of using a mask or strata image. A mask image defines the study area, which can be used to eliminate pixels from the spatial extent. A strata image divides the spatial extent into regions, which causes GeoMod to run independently within each region. We use an image of 26 towns as the strata image. We also have the option of using constrained versus unconstrained for the neighborhood search mode. The unconstrained mode causes GeoMod to use exclusively a suitability map for GeoMod selection of pixels for change in each stratum. The constrained mode still uses the suitability map but the selection of pixels that change are constrained to be those pixels that are near the border of the two categories of the beginning land use image. Those two are developed and non-developed in our example. The neighborhood search width option under the constrained mode dictates how close to the border the change is allowed to occur. The default setting for the constraint is 3 by 3. This means that a pixel can experience simulated gain of developed only if the pixel is within a 3x3 three three pixel neighborhood of an existing developed pixel at any particular time during the simulation. Therefore, a 3x3 three three constraint limits simulated change on the border between developed and non-developed at any time point. The numbers that are input into the neighborhood search width must be an odd number that is greater than 2. The developed category can change at each time step. Thus, the border can change at each time step. Therefore, the size of the time step can have an influence on the final output. If the neighborhood search mode is unconstrained, then the options for time step have no influence on the simulation. These maps show the effect of three neighborhood search mode options. The map one on the left derives from the unconstrained mode, and therefore, the simulated gain of development in yellow is allocated on the highest suitability values, which are not necessarily near the developed persistence. The middle map derives from a constrained search mode using a 3x3 three three neighborhood. All of the simulated gain of development is allocated in patches adjacent to pixels that are developed persistence. The map on the right derives from a constrained search mode using a 9x9 nine nine neighborhood. Some of the simulated gain of development is allocated in patches separate from and farther from pixels that are developed persistence. If a stratum consists of pixels that are not contiguous, then GeoMod automatically sets the neighborhood search mode to unconstrained for that stratum. This occurs in our example when a single stratum contains islands. Users can avoid the situation by making each island its own stratum. GeoMod allows the options to assign various weights to the driver images. A larger weight for a driver will tend to cause that driver to have a larger influence on the final suitability image. If equal weights is set, then every driver is assigned equal weight when creating the final suitability image. If unequal weights are used, then the influence of each driver on the suitability map is weighted in direct proportion to the size of its weight. The weights must be non-negative, real numbers that add to 1. On the left are three driver images, Geology, Elevation, and Protected. On the right is the suitability image that derives from equal weights and stratification. 
GeoMod converts each driver map to an intermediate suitability map, then takes a weighted average of the intermediate suitability maps to create exactly one suitability map. When stratification is used, GeoMod performs the calculations for each stratum independent of the other strata. GeoMod requires the user to specify for each stratum the number of pixels in each state at the ending time. For our example, state 1 is non-developed and state 2 is developed. We use data from 2001 and 2006 to predict the number of pixels of development at 2011 for each stratum. First, we fit a line through the data at 2001 and 2006. Then, we extrapolate the line to predict the number of developed pixels at 2011 for each stratum. The number of pixels developed at 2011 for each stratum are entered as state 2 in GeoMod's Quantities tab. GeoMod then allocates change according to the suitability values within each stratum until the specified quantity in each stratum is met. GeoMod produces a simulation map at the ending time point where each pixel is either in state 1, meaning non-developed, or in state 2, meaning developed. This video has shown how GeoMod uses stratification, a neighborhood search mode, and various driver weights. These options allow GeoMod to produce various scenarios for the spatial allocation land change. We thank the National Science Foundation's Long-Term Ecological Research Network and Clark University for their support. For more information about GeoMod, contact Clark Labs or Professor Pontius.